If you ever have a chance to attend a painting conference where there are exhibitors selling art supplies, you'll most likely find it's impossible not to buy something. They're usually discounted and it's so much fun going from booth to booth checking out all of the latest and greatest in paints, surfaces, brushes, and frames. While I was at the Portrait Society of America's annual conference this past May, I made sure to grab some new watercolor paints from Michael Harding's table. By the way, my name is Emily and thanks for stopping by. I'm a watercolor artist and here on my channel we do art tutorials, product reviews, and we discuss all things watercolor. So if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button right now. Watercolors are new to the Michael Harding brand, and while I picked out a whole bunch of colors to try, I asked Michael if there are any colors in the line that were special or that he was just especially proud of. He handed me a tube of lapis lazuli, saying, I've had to hide these because people were stealing them, but this granulates beautifully. I bought it on the spot. In today's video, I'm testing out this very special color by Michael Harding, lapis lazuli, by doing a single color painting using only this gorgeous natural earth blue. I felt like this color is just so unique unique that it deserved its own video and its own painting. While I paint, I'll tell you a little bit about the Michael Harding brand and offer some information on this rare and ancient pigment. Michael Harding is a British artist and paint maker known all over the world for his exceptional handmade oil paints. He started his brand in 1982 after being disappointed in the poor quality of the student paints he used. He adopts materials and techniques that date back to the days of the old masters, and his paints are known for their high pigment load and purity. Just last year in 2022, Michael Michael released his much anticipated line of watercolors. The range consists of 136 colors and they all boast the same color strength, vibrance, clarity, and longevity for which his line of oil paints is known. The paints are made with both gum arabic and honey, so they are quite sticky and re-wet very well. As far as I can tell, Michael Harding is the only other professional brand besides Daniel Smith that now carries a lapis lazuli watercolor paint. I did some digging and could only find a few handmade paints on Etsy. No other major watercolor brands that carry this color? Please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong about this. The reason this color is so rare and costly is that it's made from semi-precious stones mined from the Middle East. There are other locations such as Siberia, Chile, Canada, America and Italy where deposits of lapis can be found, but the best quality blue stone is found high in the mountains at Sari Sang, Badakhshan province, northeastern Afghanistan. By the way, much of my information on lapis lazuli was gleaned from this robust article on Michael Harding's website by the renowned authority David Margulies, who does a thorough comparison between lapis lazuli and ultramarine. So I'll leave a link in the description if you want to read that for yourself and learn even more. Lapis lazuli was described by Pliny the Elder as a fragment of the starry vault of heaven. Isn't that beautiful? It is the most exotic of semi-precious stones and pigments. Lapis was the inspiration for the modern synthetic ultramarine blue, whose color is a deeper, less dirty blue than lapis, but the handling qualities are identical. The specific mineral that bears the blue of the pigment is named lazurite. Lazurite comes in two forms, both crystals. One form is rock-like, while the other has an isometric crystal structure with the appearance of blue nuggets sitting on a matrix of white calcite crystals. It is this one that the geologists call lazurite. The processes for extracting pigment from these minerals are incredibly complex. Complex. There are several ways of preparing pigment from the solid stone mass, which involves the purification of the lapis, crushing, grinding, and washing and levigating. According to Ashok Roy, who is the director of scientific research and director of collections at the National Gallery in London, you can't just take lapis lazuli, however good the quality of the color, and just grind it up and mix it with paint medium to make a very satisfactory pigment. You actually have to extract the pigment from the mixture of minerals that constitute lapis lazuli. The choice and quality of stone is one of the most important factors in achieving the purest blue pigments, as well as the method of extracting the pigment. According to several sources, grinding solely will produce a grayish blue powder, and that's because there are still calcite and pyrites left in the mix with the lapis. For the best pigment, paint makers look for lapis lazuli with the highest blue content or lazurite, and the very least calcite or pyrite content. It's hard to imagine the challenges presented by not only acquiring these semi-precious stones, but also processing them in a way that will yield a beautiful and commercial ready result. Ever since I've learned more about this pigment and how it's made, I have a much greater appreciation for the work of the old masters, who in most cases had to make their own paint. 
I'm very grateful I live in an age where I can just buy a tube of paint and enjoy this flawless result without having to do all the work for myself. Now, as I painted with the lapis, I noticed that when I used wet and wet, it granulated in a spectacular way, especially since I was using very textured paper. This is Canson Heritage 140 pound rough press. I did have to use quite a bit of pigment and play around with the consistency of the paint in my palette to try and get a good variety of values, but that's normal for any monochromatic painting. The pebbled separating characteristics of this paint made it a delight to work with for the sky and the ground in my composition. I did have more difficulty controlling it for the smaller details and fine lines on the little girl, so that's something to consider when you're using this paint. I tested out the lifting capabilities with a damp paper towel in a couple of areas and it lives very well since it has low staining power. Other important qualities of this color are that it is semi-transparent and has a very good light fast rating. Now, if painting with unique or rare colors is something you're excited about or interested in, I highly recommend adding lapis lazuli to your collection. Because it is such an expensive color, I will most likely use it as a standalone color, probably in the sky, for example, rather than mixing it. You can use your more affordable ultramarine blue for mixing since it has more tinting strength than the lapis lazuli and is much more readily available. Currently, Michael Harding watercolors are available through Jackson's Art Supply in the UK, but I was delighted when he told me that they will be available in the US through Blick and all of the other major retailers. I'll be sure to update my links in the description below as soon as this line becomes available through Blick. What's your favorite blue? Leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching today, and I'll see you in the next video.